Does anybody have any edits, comments? No. If not, can we get a motion to accept the minutes of the fourth? Someone's gonna have to unmute themselves. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. I'll second the motion. Okay. All in favor? I hope we can see all the board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I abstain. Okay. All right. Donation? We do. We have a donation that we don't need um, a, a vote on this, but we just wanted to bring it forward. Um, so it was, it's for our backpack program for $400 from Brandon and Rebecca Brow from Berwick. Nice. Yes. I, I'm amazed. It seems like every time we have a meeting, you're telling us of another like really significant donation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, okay, so then the next agenda item is something that I wanted to um, to bring. So I had wanted to write a letter to the state just requesting that they consider bumping teachers up in the priority for being offered vaccinations. Um, and I felt like it would be more um, impactful if it was from us as a board. So I've written a letter. I would love to, if if this isn't something that everybody's comfortable with, then I will just personally, but I'd really love to have our board sign off on it. But I don't know how to, how do I share? Um, so I wrote in, I can do it. I wrote it in pages. Okay, hold on one second. Let's see. Where were you, Denise? There it is. But I don't know. I don't see anything. It, so I'm going to just do a quick little thing. I'm going to copy and put it in a PDF really quick and share it with you guys, okay? Oh, great. Um, all right. It's going to take me a second, though. So talk amongst yourselves while I do this. Can we put that on Doc Hub and sign it like we do the warrants? I'm sure that someone smarter than me could do that. Yeah. <laughs> Denise, yeah. do you want to talk a little bit more about the letter as Sue's tr sharing it? Yeah, sure. So, um, so my my goal here was not to say, "Hey, we want to reopen schools." Hey, we want to do this. It, the it wasn't to push an agenda. It was simply to try to get teachers to be more to be higher on the priority list. Um, I they're currently in uh, what is it one B or whatever wherever it is two B. But there's still, there's no, um, it says February through April, but there's nothing. And for quite a while, there has been no additional language. Half the states in the country are prioritizing teachers. Um, so my thought was, this is one of, you know, having vaccinations available to teachers and to our more vulnerable populations. We've said all along that those are the main reasons that we are, um, having schools be either closed or hybrid, the models that we're doing. So if we can, and I think like we just heard from Aaron, um, you know, there's, we can't move forward as a board, as a district um, without some of these barriers moving. And um, so, so it was, again, it's, it's not to, it's not to push an agenda. It is to simply, um, try to encourage them to get teachers higher on the priority list, like now, and um, and that's that's all it is. So the my uh, the feedback that I got um, was that the governor and Dr. Shaw are listening, um, and the recommendation was to send it directly to them and copy our local reps and um, and also Pender Macon. So. Um, my my understanding is that, you know, they're reading, they're they're listening to the feedback that they're getting. I just shared it to your emails, guys. So you should be able. It, and I basically I just put it on a regular document, a gov, uh, a Google Doc, and shared it with you. Okay. I have a question. Um, aren't have has the state of Maine classified teachers as essential workers? No. So they're yeah, they're considered. 
No, well, it was our essential workers, but they moved us down the list to several layers after they determined that they needed to take care of the elderly population first. Yeah, so the, rate, the way it reads right now, phase 1B, February through April, is people 65 and older, adults with high-risk medical conditions. Um, and I will just say that my father-in-law, who is 98, was told it would be a month at least before he could get vaccinated. Yeah. So, um, and then the last one is critical frontline workers to be determined. And that's the language that bothers me is the to be determined. So this kind of goes on and this is including um, food and agricultural workers, postal service, manufacturing, grocery store, public transit, and those who work in the education sector and daycare workers. So this is not, does not read like well, essential. We don't sound very essential in that list. <laughs> no, we don't. Sorry. There's, nobody would disagree. All of those are essential. Absolutely. I'm just making, I just want to make one pitch. I'm not saying that others are not also important, but I'm, I'm just trying to uh, make a pitch to have this, you know, prioritize so that so many other things can begin to fall into place. So if you guys want to just take a read through and let me know what you think. I don't know where Astrid well, is, but she raised her hand. Oh. <laughs> raised hey, her <laughs> oh, you're muted. You're muted. Okay, uh, try now. Still can't hear you. <laughs> um. I it says type in chat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can type in chat. It says you're unmuted, but I don't know. Did you mute something on your computer? There might be sometimes you're I have a thing on my headphones that you can I can mute, but like she might accidentally. Yeah. Um, do you want to put it in the chat? She's trying. Okay. <laughs> You might want to just um, come out and go back in, Estrita. Maybe there's something like that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Any other? Well, I would totally sign this. I, I agree with it. And I thought for a while that teachers should be booped up in the hierarchy. I mean, yeah, elderly people, it's important, but they don't have to go in and be exposed to a lot of stuff every day. And I think it would help to prevent spread as well as their. Yeah, I just feel like this, there's so many other things riding on it. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Any? I say send it. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, I'd be happy to sign it. All right. I don't know how we're sign I think, it. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I need. I think I would. I mean, Travis, Linda, who else did I miss? Lynn, you guys okay with it? Yeah, Lynn said she'd sign it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, well, let's, um, I'll talk to Jen and see mm -hmm. if there's a way to do that. Um, there is definitely a way. I just don't know. Uh, yeah. From the email I've been getting this. Yeah, you okay. can do almost anything. Oh, got another doc up, please. And then um, you, you might just want to send a note out to Stephanie and uh, Joanne with the, with the letter. Yeah, the I will. Since they're not here. Um, and then so yeah, so the people that I would so obviously it would go out in an email, and I would copy Pender Macon, Mark Lawrence. Is Joe Rafferty the other senator? Mm. I, think, yeah, I think so. Yes. But um, Beth O'Connor and Tiffany Roberts. So just unless there's someone else you think should be copied on it, but I, that was who I was going with. So okay, well thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, appreciate the support. I don't know if it'll do anything, but it's, I can't, I feel, I've felt like we couldn't not do anything. So, yeah, um, writing that. what's that? Thank you for writing that. That was a good yeah. idea.
Um, all right, Audra. I was just gonna uh, piggyback off that for a minute and just let you know that through some of our superintendent meetings that we have on a weekly basis, um, we're providing that feedback up to Pender as well about the importance of getting teachers and staff. Yeah, great. So it's, it's being said from many different angles, so that's really good. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they, it's, yeah. I think they have to hear it. Good, I'm glad you guys are, are doing that. Yes. Well, there are quite a few students as well who are grocery store workers and handle food as well. So that could also play a factor into it. Mm -hmm. right. I don't know if you guys can hear me now. Yeah. yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> but just to, to reiterate what I typed, um, the schools being fully open is such a crucial piece to everything else the state needs in order to open easily. I mean, if parents don't have to worry about the students during the day because they're at school, then the work side of things has a more natural flow. So it makes a great deal of sense to have the teachers protected just so that part of the puzzle is complete. Yeah. Um, I think to not have them be in the front, not the front line necessarily, there's a lot of need all over the place and there's not enough vaccine to go around right now, but yeah, there's a priority there for a number of reasons. So that's it. All right. And well, again, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. All right. All right. Updates. Sure. So we'll start with Denise, who's here, and she is just going to share the update on our PPE. We didn't, she did a recent inventory. So just sharing that information. Hi, everyone. Um, I am going to try to share uh a document here hold on one second yeah denise you're going to show us all up right by sharing <laughs> did it did it show up not yet okay not sure yeah. why how well, are you <laughs> hold on here we go tori update here we are there it is. All right. You are that special. <laughs> um, so uh, again, at the last meeting, Denise had just asked um, kind of about the state of PPE inventory, um, masks and shields and gloves and gowns and things like that. Um, we had some items provided by the state free of charge, um, disposable masks, some gloves, some gowns. Um, you can see that in the top box. and. The, the uh, first column, um, the first row is how much we received, how much of that we have used and what balance is remaining. Similarly, in the second box, uh, those are the vendor provided uh, items that we purchased. Um, and down in the bottom, I just did a very brief overview of how much we still have on hand. Looks like we're in pretty good shape. Kind of crazy. Um, so what happens is when they, when these come in, um, Kathy in my office uh, puts the invoices and the accounts as received. Um, the school secretaries are sending up information weekly to request more items. And once a month, they give us a, um, an inventory of what they have. Um, and then Kevin Moore goes over to our storage and physically counts the inventory um, so that we're sure that what people are reporting is actually what we have on hand. But. Wow. Great. All right. Thanks. Denise, can you share that with me when you get a minute? Yes. Thank you. I'll put that in the minutes. All right. Thank you, Denise. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. So we'll, we'll just do a quick update on athletics. We had um, basketball games yesterday. Um, didn't work out so well for Noble, but we played. Uh, so that was, that's, that was a plus in of itself. Um, we were starting some intramural um, after vacation for the middle school. For, oh. And they're going to be doing some intramural work on the days that they're, they're in session. So Mondays and Tuesdays, we're going to start that way. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of a phase in similar to what we did with the high school. Just have a couple teams, uh, a couple of groups working that first week um, on and off you know, just that Monday and Tuesday, and then we'll increase it as we go ahead, just making sure that everybody's following all of the precautions that we have in place. 
Uh, so we'll gradually increase that. So that's some um, progress in that area. Um, just moving on to transportation now, I hope uh, we sent out a communication through the central office about um, the bus route in Berwick that I mentioned last week that Brenda had said two weeks ago, just about the fact that we needed to add another a run that was um, taken off. We had to add another run, but we did hire somebody for that run and we're able to get that um, started right after break, which will be good because that will take, that will alleviate some of the shuttles that are in Berwick currently, at, especially at the, between Hussey and Knowlton school. Um, so all that communication went out and hopefully that went out smoother than the last time there were some shifts and changes. Um, and then I'll start with attendance. And then if Amy wants to kind of jump in at that point, we obviously didn't have attendance this week, but the week prior to vacation, our student attendance, we had um, 91 was our low, 91% in attendance, and our high was 98%. And for staff, we had a low of 94% present with a high of 98% present. Um, and those, as I said last time as well, I think we're seeing kind of a pattern uh, now, now that we've kind of headed out of that December holiday kind of thing, it seems like we're we're hitting we're staying in, in the mid to higher nineties. Um, Amy, did you have anything else you wanted to add about that? Um, I think the only thing um, of note was um, the closure of the uh, Knowlton School outbreak by the CDC. It has been two weeks since our last case there, so. Uh, they were able to close out the outbreak status um, and hopefully we'll stay there for a little while, but fingers crossed. Good, thank you. And those were just the updates since we didn't have school this week, it was a little quieter. Okay. Estrita? Yeah, um, can you talk at all a little bit about the impact on continuing with the athletics given the message that went out tonight? Sure. So um, I hope everybody saw that message. So we had one um, group that is unable to continue participating for the next 10 days. Amy, do you want to touch base on that a little bit as well? Yep. So there was an exposure um, from uh, an individual associated with Noble High School Athletics. Um, all of the close contacts have been notified and um, we met with um, Aaron, Aaron, and Alex uh, call them the Triple A team. So uh, Aaron Watson, Aaron Moore, and Alex Fusco, the athletic trainer. Just like we do with our building admin, each time we have a case in a building. Um, so it was their first go round, um, but really they they all were there, present, and on the ball. Uh, they were all able to notify the families very quickly. In, in both um, telephone contact and follow-up email. And then the community letter went out. And so uh, we will hopefully not see any spread um, from that event and get everybody back in the, after their 10 day quarantine. So it's similar to um, like if we had a classroom that had to go remote, the other classrooms uh, would continue to participate. So similarly, we have one area of our athletics that is impacted, but the rest of our athletics are currently continuing. And those that exposure didn't impact uh, like a classroom or. Right. Because we've been out. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Great. Good. Okay. Any other questions on that? Anything else? Um, employment updates? We have none at this time. Okay. And superintendent update? Anything sure. in addition to? Yes. So we have the facility and finance, the facilities and finance committee um, meetings. We had scheduled two half days this upcoming Monday and Tuesday, the 22nd and the 23rd. Uh, but as you'll see, as you kind of look through your budget uh, books, your budget uh, binders, that there's not a great deal of shifts and changes to the budget at this point in time. So we're we've able to we're able to com compact that day uh, to instead of two days, just one half day to have um, our cost centers come in and present to our facilities and finance committee. Uh, so that's the update on that which brings it to um, our, the binders are ready. So um, 
you can pick up tomorrow um, till 12 o'clock. And then if you can't get in tomorrow, uh, you can pick it up some that your binder up sometime next week. Travis, you had your hand up. Yeah, I got an invite for Monday night as well. Is that, that I don't have a meeting on Monday during the day. Right. Right. So the one in the evening is going to be the building committee and the facilities and finance committee. And we did meet with the architectural firm today and we asked, we said that we wanted this to be a Zoom, um, a Google meets because Zoom was problematic. Uh, Yay, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we missed you, Nancy. The whole town of Lebanon thanks you, I think. <laughs> Uh, so yes, yeah, so there's two separate things going on. It's the building and facilities and finance at 4:30, and um, Alan, the architect, is going to just spend some time. Um, he redid some of the timelines and some of the things that we need to do sooner than later. So we'll go through some of that um, at the, at that time. So you should have um, Tuesday morning, but then you should have Monday at 4:30 for that. Tuesday morning. What times does that start, Audra, on Tuesday? <laughs> It was nine to 12. Nine to 12, that's what I thought. I'm just putting it in. And again, binders are in the in the central office. So I have a question um, sort of about the, the budget process. In the past, we've done uh, like a workshop night. Um, have we thought about how we might do that remotely or? Is it in per how how would how might we do that? We don't necessarily have to answer that now. I'm just curious because those are really helpful when we have the option to the opportunity to talk to different groups. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we've thought through how we that could probably do some sort of a Google Hangout that has different people in different like you can pop into one and pop into another and right. like Chris Russo will probably want everybody to come visit him, right? So we'll have to think that through, but I'm sure we can figure it out. It's on. Okay. It's on the schedule. Yeah, it is. The format yeah. has not been figured out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great. Okay, but as long as we can yeah. figure something out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything else? I have. Yeah. Another, I have another, but that can go at the other. <laughs> <laughs> and then others. <laughs> Just really quickly, wanted to share that I don't know if you saw Channel Eight News at noon yesterday, but. Um, Laura Cashel, who does our Tri-Town Bookmobile, has received a grant for $1,500 um, through Kenny Bank Savings Bank uh, in order to purchase seniors a book. And um, so I have the book. I'm going to hold it up. It's going to be backwards. But um, this is the book. And it's been um, it's it's just a really positive book on being hopeful and using resources and kindness. And um, so What's she- What's the name of the book? Oh yes, that would help you. The boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. Of course um, it has a horse in it, so it's gotta be good. That's right. Mm -hmm. So um, she's securing some of, um, one per student and um, Channel 8 News did a little highlight on it yesterday at noontime. So I'll share that link with you so you can see it. It was very nice and the book is, is a great book and um, looking forward to that. And there is a way that um, families or um, community members can buy a book plate um, to go into the book for about $10 just as, a, as an additional kind of fundraiser for this. So, it's a great idea, a lot of support in, uh, around that, that. So that's my other. Okay. Um, and, and I sort of have another, um, I just, I just wanted to let the rest of the board know that I've asked Sue and Audra to, um, I'm not sure what we said the timeline would be, but, um, basically to kind of do a first semester review, let us know kind of where things are, you know, just similar to how they did it at the end of the first quarter. Um, so looking at academics and, um, kind of, the a bigger view of everything and then um just talked about how when we as a board kind of signed off on this plan last summer the idea was that midway through the year we would revisit um the middle school and high schoolers schedule so um i don't know if that's something i can't remember if you said that we'd be able to do that at the next meeting but it's something that they're working on and and we'll be um kind of revisiting all of that hopefully at least getting a 
state of the district <laughs> yeah. update. So, so anybody else have any other? I just wanted to touch base. I don't know, and Amy, this is more to you. I don't know if you saw the uh, Dr. Shaw's press conference on Tuesday with the Department of Education, but um, do you have, have you received anything yet on the potential of expanding the testing and all that stuff that they talked about? I haven't, and it's like they were delivering that good news, saying that they've got all of these tests, but really no way for, like, how to use them because as you can imagine screening teachers and students would not be a one person job i don't know if they are they have plans to send in supports to schedule large scale testing of staff and students kind of like they did when sanford had their first outbreak they sent a, a group i don't know exactly who it was i don't know if you remember travis um to do that mass testing. So I don't know what that would look like. It's like, yay, we've got all these tests, but how do we use them? Okay, I was just curious if they had, if they had given anything out towards, towards you guys yet as their playbook update, but no, sounds like no. in the future, we'll have the ability to do more frequent testing. Just a matter of how right. it can happen. And where we are now, like we've got, it's great to know that there's more of a supply. So it won't be a problem when we run out of the ones we have now. But as of right now, like we're just getting our feet wet with testing sick individuals in the school and to think about how one nurse per building would be able to orchestrate staff and student randomized testing. I just, it would have to be something bigger than us. Yeah, you've got but, enough to deal with. <laughs> right. I mean, it's great. It's great that we have them available. We just need somewhat of a plan, I think. Do you guys have, were you, did you already receive more tests or you yeah. just got word that they're coming? That they, they're coming into the state kind of like they came in in the first wave. Um, I don't know if ordering them would be the same avenue that um, we did to order the ones that we have now. Um, there's been no specific sent out. Um, to that. And then this week, of course, um, because Maine is on their winter break, we didn't have our uh, Maine State nurses hours. Um, so there was no update. So those happen on Wednesdays. Um, I'm assuming they'll touch on this subject um, this coming Wednesday at our state meeting. All right. Any, anything else? No. All right. I guess we can get a motion to adjourn. Anyone? I'll make the motion. This is Nancy. That we adjourn. Thank you. I'll second the motion. This is Linda. All right. All right. And all in favor? <laughs> See your little hands. All right. Thank, Thank you. you all. Have a good night. Thank Have you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Great.